the explosion of the nuclear baton. How first ballistic missile burned Marshall Nedelin and destroyed Baconer Cosmodrome the most terrible disaster in the history of world rocket production, R-16 explosion at Baconer on October 24, 1960, the most terrible disaster in the history of global astronautics and rocket technology occurred at the Baconer test site in the steppes of Kazakhstan. On this day, the R-16 intercontinental ballistic missile exploded at launch. According to official information, 78 people died, according to data of Academician B. Chertok, 126 people were killed that day. Among the dead were many Soviet rocket designers, as well as Marshal M. I. Nedelin, commander of the Soviet rocket forces. The disaster was a terrible blow to the Russian space industry and rocket production. The worst accident at the Cosmodrome might have been caused both by simple carelessness and the Soviet leader's inclination to armament demonstration. Before I get to the subject, I want to ask you to like this video, thus supporting me and my channel. To me that is the best reward from you. So, you're on Wittener channel, and this is a video about the most terrible disaster in the history of world rocket engineering, the explosion of the R-16 at Baconer. Let's get started. Time vs. the Union. By the end of the 50s the Cold War between the USSR and the United States was reaching a whole new level. In order to wipe the enemy into dust, weapons with absolute destructive power were needed. In 1959, the leading missile design bureau of the USSR, OKB-586, better known as Yuzhnoye, was commissioned to create such a weapon. Mikhail Angel, rocket engineer and protege of Korolev himself, was appointed chief designer of the rocket. However Khrushchev almost immediately gave the new general designer the task of building a ballistic missile to strike America quickly, efficiently, and without mistakes. Work on the silo-based complex with the R-16 missile literally boiled over. Boiling generally became the key topic in the design of the 140-ton missile, since the fuel tanks were filled with an extremely toxic but highly effective fuel mixture in order to cross the ocean and explode over the native land of the Americans. It was based on asymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, heptyl, which was oxidized by nitric acid mixed with diazotetraoxide. Ignition of this fuel gave a thrust, which could not be achieved by any other rocket before. However, the new fuel had one peculiarity. It turned out to be several orders of magnitude more explosive than any rocket fuel created before and after the Cold War, heptyl and oxidizer exploded even from minor contact through micro cracks in the tanks. But no one was concerned about the danger. The priority was to knock America on the head, so it was decided not to take the probable risks into account. Haste with bad results in record time, in half a year, after receiving the order, the R-16 missile was ready. Of course, R-16 wasn't quite as big as Korolev's lunar missile, but unlike its predecessor, the R-7 missile, Khrushchev's new nuclear baton was not created on the basis of the lunar technology, which meant that it was built under control of the military from scratch. In mid-October 1960 parts and components of the new rocket were brought to Baconer, and on October 22 the final assembly of the rocket for the first test launch began. Khrushchev and the military brass rushed Yangel's team and factory teams. The launch, as was often the case in the USSR, was hurried and a demonstration of power and technology readiness at the same time was planned to coincide with the anniversary of the Great October Revolution. By October 20, through the efforts of two planned shifts and under the supervision of military representatives and KGB, no less than 70 serious remarks on the missile design were eliminated. The quality of the unique ballistic missile was affected by the hurry. The joints, the seals, the leaks, all these problems were repaired almost at the knees, though the safety requirements and inspection protocols suggested that the missile should be sent back to the manufacturing plant. The importance of the moment, not only the chief missile designer Mikhail Angel, but also Marshal Mitrofan Nedelin, commander of strategic missile forces, came to celebrate the launch and to make a speech of encouragement in front of his colleagues. He was quite rightly and justly considered one of the founding fathers of Soviet nuclear weapons. Nedelin understood well the potential of ballistic missiles, regularly came to meetings with Yangel, and took a lively interest in the technical details of the missile, sometimes prompting the development team with the most unobvious ways to solve problems. By the time the R-16 tests began, Nedelin had been serving as chief of the missile forces for less than a year. However, the presence of Nedelin and the OKB-586 team had no effect on the quality of the missile. By the evening of October 22, 1960 test run of electrical systems showed that no one can guarantee a reliable launch of the rocket. A quick check revealed that in a great hurry, the factory used the cheapest and most available wires they could find in stock for the electrical circuits. 
as a result, the braided wiring was melting under high voltage. This error caused the rocket to malfunction three times, once during the factory testing, and twice more during the checkout phase before the launch. But nobody bothered to challenge the order of the management to make an emergency launch, and everything was left as it was, hastily patched up with an ordinary rubber membrane found in an automobile workshop. Nuclear malfunction starting a rocket at a military cosmodrome is only partially similar to starting a civilian rocket. In the Soviet Union, military rocket launches were watched from a protected bunker located near the launch pad. The concrete fortification, which the military called a crypt among themselves, was designed to withstand any, even the most powerful explosion. By the evening of October 23 everything was ready for launch, but after nightfall at Baconer another emergency happened. During installation the splitter block once again closed, the activation of which shot off the second stage from the first one and started the engines. The problem was reported to the shift supervisor, but it was decided not to consider the failure critical because it was planned to refuel the rocket with hazardous fuel in a few hours. To this day it is not known who exactly gave permission to train a rocket with such a defect, but the fact is that by October 24 they began refueling a rocket on the launch pad, which according to all safety regulations should not only have been loaded with fuel, but not brought to the launch site at all. In the morning of October 24, a group of technicians is allowed to the already fueled rocket. They are tasked with replacing the faulty fuel distributor blocks on the missile, already prepared for launch, with more than 100 tons of heptal nitrogen fuel inside. Former commander of the USSR Strategic Rocket Forces Regiment in Uzhgorod, Reserve Colonel Viktor Torchinsky, noted that for such professionalism on a missile loaded with a nuclear warhead, the entire brigade would have been sent out to woods. This is not even outrageous, this is criminal negligence, deliberate. On the verge of sabotage. It was always brought to everyone's attention that first the fuel was drained, the check was carried out, and only then the engineering team was launched. Why they started repairing electric circuits on a fully fueled rocket I cannot understand. Any contact, even a microscopic one, and the rocket would have exploded right after refueling. Almost like a nuclear fire. Barely having avoided the explosion and having successfully replaced the electric units, the team of technicians left the launch pad and the military began to arrive at the launch site. Marshal Nedelin personally supervised the process of bringing the missile to launch. Imperturbable and courageous commander of the strategic rocket forces directly opposite the huge launch mast was placed a chair, sitting 17 meters from the fueled rocket, Nedelin watched the preparation process. By 6.40 p.m., the 30-minute launch readiness was announced. Nedelin was majestically drinking tea from a thermos brought by someone and chatting vividly with the range commander and Yangel's delegation. At about the same time, along with a few colleagues, Mikhail Yangel went behind the bunker, about 100 meters from the launch pad, from the launch complex to take a smoke break. Three minutes later, there was a terrible rumble, more like a nuclear explosion, over Baconer. For the first few seconds, Mikhail Yangel and Andronik Yosifian, the creator of electrical circuits for rocket technology, and academician Alexei Bogomolov, the industrial supervisor of the military space program, lay huddled on the ground. There was the acrid smell of heptal and nitrogen in the air, which burned with such a temperature that most of the steel structures on the launching table began to melt, as if from a gas torch. Yangel and his colleagues stayed behind the bunker for about 40 minutes and only then made the decision to flee to a safe distance. After the creator of the R-16 rocket began to regain consciousness, he saw a terrible picture. The ground charred within a radius of about 300 meters, the rocket burning brightly, and the smoldering bodies of people. Almost immediately Yangel received a report, due to a short circuit in the separator unit, 30 minutes before the scheduled launch, the engines of the second stage turned on. The switching on of the engines provoked a contact of the rocket fuel and oxidizers in the tanks, and almost immediately an explosive heptal fire blew up, not only the launch platform, but also everyone who was closer than 100 meters. It was not possible to put out the flames at once, the propellant, which was corrosive and caused lung spasms at a distance of several kilometers, burned for two more hours. Only then did the fire department begin to extinguish the platform. Marshal Nedelin's body was never found on the launch pad at the spaceport. All that was left of the ideologist of the Soviet nuclear shield, a piece of overcoat and epaulets, as well as a charred dial of a wristwatch, which froze the time of the explosion, 18 hours and 43 minutes. Along with Nedelin, according to various estimates, at least a hundred people, from the Cosmodrome engineering team to the representatives of the Strategic Missile Forces and Yangel's team, could have died in the almost biblical fire. 
Mikhail Angel himself was not punished for the incident with the death of the marshal and commander of the strategic missile forces. Korolyov personally interceded for him in front of Khrushchev, saying that anything can happen with new equipment. A few months later it turned out that the reason of the accident was not only technical malfunction, but gross violation of technology of rocket preparation for launch. The rocket explosion and the death of Marshal Nedelin forced the country's leadership to tighten security measures, which the military is guided by today. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.